Okay, we are US architects, uh, Eva Pfannes and uh, Sylvain Artenberg. I'm uh, German. And I'm French. And we have a practice in the Netherlands. Our interest in water started when we were invited to work on a project which was the Emscher Kunst in 2010. And we we were actually facing a situation where there was a very dirty river, an open sewage, and a very clean river next to it. And we, I think for a while, we already were busy with sort of this um, thinking of about sustainability being a cycle. So real sustainability only happens when you think in cycles. And so we tried to make a cycle between those two waters, the clean one and the dirty one, and we ended up making a very small sewage treatment station which uh, was like 80 meter long and 5 meter wide with all the different steps actually rendering the sewage eventually drinkable and working only with water from the site. And for us it was very important to have the, 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 this closed loop system in a close relation to the human body or to the body so to actually make uh, people experience the different stages of water because water is actually the most important resources uh, for, for humanity so. and for the earth and we are made of 66 percent of water. So that is all about balance so we have to learn how to live with nature in a balance and that also extends to energy obviously. I think we see the, the infrastructure as part of architecture in a sense that it is the let's say it is the metabolism, like we have a, a body and we have a system inside our body and in a way this system of feeding our body and digesting the food is the most, that's what keeps us alive and we all look differently so we can say basically if the city, if the metabolism of the city is not working, the city has a huge problem and so we can change the makeup but we need to really make the urgent things work properly and we need to address them and actually also find a way that people want to engage with them. And I think that's why it's important that architects also deal with infrastructure because they know how to make things um, working. They l know how to think in systems and with sort of a complexity of a city and how to integrate things into the urban space. There's also a, a notion of being a mediator. So because you understand uh, different uh, parts of the problems or the different like uh, uh, social, political, spatial, technical, you can kind of mediate between all the different people and find a solution within. So a contextual solution which can uh, basically um, sort out a lot of stuff. The artwork is mm -hmm. uh, very small utopias where we test the system on a very small scale uh, in order for people to understand them, to trust them, and we try to make the leap uh, to the big scale. That's what actually we're busy with here now. Mm -hmm. uh, this um, pilot project is made to, uh, uh, it's a pedagogical tool to actually show to the people of the municipality uh, the people, the politicians, the engaged people in communities. So we now starting a process of showing it and also demonstrating that it can work. All right, so how does it work, the system? We have four different elements. We're sitting on one. We have the toilet next to us. We have the uh, septic tank. We have the constructed wetland and the water system. And those four system, four uh, elements are connect connected and are in a closed uh, cycle. The objective is to actually uh, use this uh, pilot to propose it uh, to, uh, to the municipalities and to other people to actually sort out uh, uh, within the city uh, the problem of uh, sewage and pollution. So, for instance, here specifically in Brazil, there's a lot of uh, pollution problems, not only in the favelas, but in a lot of rural areas, especially here in Guarachiba, uh, there is actually no um, sewage at all. So, it worked till 
a certain point, but now the density uh, of people living here is uh, so high that the nature cannot actually process all this uh, pollution. And, and I think as um, architects, we're interested in this sort of how we deal with waste. So th there's a sort of paradigm shift, we think, which needs to happen which is where waste is not something which happens, which is dealt with somewhere outside the city, somewhere which we don't see, which is really far away, it's kind of um, um, yeah, under the carpet, and we need to integrate it within the city in a decentralized way. So that is where this plant filter is really interesting because it just takes one to one and a half square meter per person and it can be integrated in the city, in, in rural communities, favelas, condominiums, etc. And it's an aesthetically pleasing element which can help deal with a very important issue. It's an engineered nature, it's nature in use and actually nature is much more powerful than any uh, kind of super highly technical um, infrastructure uh, we found. We believe that here it's really um, a place where you can kind of move on to a next step. So mm -hmm. this idea of uh, integrating nature in the city as an infrastructure is uh, extremely relevant here. So the project that we did before is called Agua Carioca. It's called Agua Carioca. And it, uh, we started with a research um, where we interviewed a lot of different players in the city, um, from municipality to activists to community leaders in the favelas. And we worked in four different favelas in Mare, Rio das Pedres, um, Mojo do Salguero and Mojo da Formiga, where we interviewed a lot of people. So this research became a film and through this research we gathered ideas to also then make four different proposals to actually devise a strategy which we showed how it could work in four different proposals and this was exhibited at Studio X in the center of Rio and the, yeah, it was well received but it immediately led to the next question which is how does it look, how does it smell, you know how does, how it, does function? it function? Does it perform? Is it real? Can it be tropicalized? We thought that C.J. Um, Roberto Bolle Marx was always um, a great inspiration. Since we came first to Brazil, we loved this place. And Roberto Bolle Marx was a very early um, defender, uh, like an ambientalista, like a, a very busy with sustainable issues because he saw that it's important to keep the Amazon, to keep biodiversity, to keep all the species alive. So we thought we could really connect to this spirit and moreover it has an immense plant collection. And we were talking about the tropicalization before, like especially using um, which plant species can be used for the constructed wetland. That is. Uh, a big question and here we can dig into an enormous knowledge of the gardeners who work with Bole Marx, who know which plant has what kind of root and uh, with the botanists from the, from the team and together with them we were able I think to, to move to a new step so now we're testing I think seven different type of plants and see how they will perform. Change can only happen usually through crisis and the fact that there is a crisis of how to deal with sewage in this urban situation here can really help to develop an alternative, a new model, which actually in, in, in Europe it cannot because it's already developed but maybe in a, in a wrong way or in a way which is already old. So here something better can replace the system which is normally applied. We, we believe that the, somehow the, yeah, the municipal bodies or the federal bodies uh, should actually uh, kind of somehow take action and, and somehow finance uh, this type of project uh, because you can see that at the moment that the, like, uh, the infrastructure of the communities are, are definitely not uh, sorted out. And this is interesting because you, you mm. in a way, clear the problem within... Uh, the yeah, there's also some 
part of the work there which is social, which is actually to adapt a system like this, which technically works to a kind of other social system, to see if this can work in this other social system where you actually don't have a public, you have, um, you have other sort of um, work, a big part of the work there would need to be in the social to convince people and to make them want to try it out. I think ideally we would like to help, um, yeah, to kind of um, bring up the awareness, but to also realize some work. So ideally we would like to go from here, the next step, to a larger pilot in a real situation. Um, that could be um, a community, could be a favela, could be a rural part, or could help cleaning a river. So there is a kind of There gap. is a gap that we actually entering into starting to understand uh, where is the gap between mm -hmm. regulation, what you need to do by law, and what you don't do, therefore, which, but it's still polluting somehow. So that's very interesting mm -hmm. for us. Because